so this is research desktop i know i recognize i think a couple of you from previous ones so um just so i know how quickly to go through who has already set all this up and knows how to do this okay here you go you're all set up everybody's good okay so we'll just go through this really quick um, so the thin link client is what you need to access Research Desktop. Um, there's the link there, so if you're following along on the slides or if you're following along at home and watching, um, then you can just click on this link and it'll send you to the information you need to download it and get started. Right. Okay. There we go. Is that the right one? Yeah. Okay. Um, and part of the reason we're using, uh, one of the nice things about the research desktop is that it actually comes with Jupyter Notebooks pre-installed, so you don't have to go through and figure out how to do that. Um, and the Jupyter Notebooks also use multiple languages, both Python and R are included in that, uh, on the one on research desktop, so you don't have to, again, do anything. They'll run both types of code for you. Uh, they allow for detailed annotation of the code, so as you can see right here, we have a lot of text that's explaining what's going on down here. Uh, and that way, for people who, one, have not coded before or are fairly new to it, um, it allows you to kind of learn as you go and figure out what's going on. And we tell you where you make changes, you know, because some of the code, uh, usually in there we tell you, hey, if you touch this, you're going to break it, so just leave this one alone. But here's kind of what it's doing. And then another set of the code will say, okay, here are the lines where you're probably going to want to make adjustments based on your data set and that kind of thing. So, um Yes, it worked, all right. Um, and today, we're just gonna be doing Python because we're using something called Vader, which is only available in Python. Um, but we do have other notebooks that do other things in R as well, but we're not gonna be getting into that today. So, um, and the thing I do like to point out is that Python is not named after the giant snake. It is actually named after Monty Python. So, made me like it even more. Um, and you can access our scripts for today at this link, um, and you're going to, oh. yeah, so who here needs to be added? Um, okay, okay, so, yeah, yeah, that's why we have you sign in. So she's going to be sending you, you're going to get an email asking you to collaborate on this folder. And then that way, when you are invited as a collaborator, it automatically, once you accept, it automatically shows up as a box folder in your set of folders there. So that way you don't have to be downloading and moving things around. So that's part of the reason we're doing it this way. Uh, so once you're set up and you've been invited, um, you're going to click on the thin link client, which looks like that. And then you're going to have this box pop up when you do. This is the exact server you need to access Research Desktop. So that's what RED stands for, RE Research Desktop. UIT.IU.EDU. Your username, this one's mine, can't have it. Um, and then your IU passphrase as well. So that's what you're going to need to fill in there to log in. And then you're going to be asked for your duo, a two factor login. And I usually just hit one, send it to my phone. But you do whatever works for you. And once you do that, th this is what's going to pop up. This is what Research Desktop looks like. So you're actually on Carbonate. You're using Carbonate, which is our supercomputer, but it's in a nice, very pretty desktop format. So it's easier for people who do not like using the command line and that kind of thing. It makes it a lot easier to use. And again, we have things pre-installed. You can see Jupyter Notebooks. Um, but for right now, to set up, you can also access Box now from Research Desktop, which is a change from Karst Desktop, which is what we used before. Um, to do that, you just go to Applications. You can see Storage, Box Setup. You'll have to go through the process of signing in just the very first time you do it. After that, when you hit Box Setup, the Box folder will just appear, and it'll tell you that it's been mounted to your desktop, and you won't have to sign in again. So it's just this one time. Um, then after that, when you come in, every time you come back in, you will have to hit box setup again, but it'll just load it and it won't make you sign in again. So once you've got that set up and you go into box, you're going to find that text analysis folder and you're going to want to pull this one that says intro sentiment analysis. OK, 
Okay, that's the one you're going to want to use. And you're going to want to pull it from box and put it on your carbonate home directory. So it's going to say carbonate. That's the name of the, the directory, the folder. And you're going to want to save that intro to some analysis in there. Yeah. So it's, um, let me see, can I go back up? Okay, it's right there. Where mine says close to us home, yours is going to have your username with home. And then to get Jupyter Notebooks up and going, just applications, analytics, Jupyter Notebook, and it'll open up and it'll give you what is in that carbonate directory, um, the list of folders and files in there. In. Okay, so what is sentiment analysis? It sounds like most of you have a pretty decent idea already, but put it simply, um, it is the task of identifying negative and positive opinions. And um, we actually, when we first started doing this, we were using a dictionary um, that was pretty basic and um, a script that was really basic, and it was to identify airline sentiment um, on Twitter. So. Um, if you can imagine, most people were complaining, right? Because when was the last time you were like, I had the best flight on Delta yesterday. Um, you're like, no, I was two hours late and the stewardess was rude and the like, coffee was stale. So, um, so that was actually a really easy place to start. And then we started to realize when we got into more nuanced data sets, actually the, the downfall of our initial script, which only took into account um, one word at a time. So if I said, I don't hate, it had trouble with that. Um, and um, it didn't have um, sort of a big, yeah, so it, it basically wasn't doing any complex calculations. Um, so if we're looking here though, if we're looking at words in a tweet and you're a computer, how would you tell that like this statement is positive? What do you think is like the signal word here? Hmm? Of course, because all computers love chocolate. I think I heard it already. Yeah, it's like, yeah, exactly. So what it's doing, I mentioned there were some dictionaries, right? And that some of these dictionaries actually cost a lot of money. Um, so the really key word here is I like chocolate ice cream. Um, so then depending on the algorithm, um, again, this initial one sort of rated like and love the same. And honestly, I would say, okay, I like chocolate ice cream, but I love my pets. And like, honestly, those are like, I can't even like put them on a scale. It has to be like algorithmic so that like are exponential so you could tell how much I love my pets. Um, so we got in, when we first started using beta, what we really liked about it was that there's a range. Um, and so it's now a range of negative four to four. And so love is rated a 3.2 and like is a 1.5. So not accurate in relation to my pets and my love of chocolate ice cream, but that's okay. Um, it, you know, so it looks like that, at that intensity. Um, the other thing that Vader does, which we'll look at later, it also takes into account punctuation. So if I put lots of exclamation points on there, it's also gonna up the intensity. So um, we have some tweets on paper um, that you should all have in front of you. And what I'd like you to do right now is go through and sort of think about what you think are some signal words. And then you can work with a friend if you want to, that's totally fine. Sorry, people at home. This is the part where you miss out. You're not here, you don't get to see how fun I am. And it's going to take a hot minute. Um, can I have a pen? I can do my own exercise. Oh, well, there you go. Okay. Um, Eric, you're going to miss out. Okay. So as human readers, we know generally what these tweets are about. But on the first one, what are words that you all identified as like possible like important words? Yeah, right. And then, yeah. And then I have resolve circles, right? But also you may, 
Yeah, you might have seen me cheating up here. Um, so I did also almost do a, diction, a dissertation on dictionaries. Uh, this is the list of words and the valences for Vader. Um, and so I was like, I wonder. So I did a little bit of cheating um, on the fly. So for me, though, I was like, OK, I have no time, but it's in all caps. And then I have resolve. And then government shut down. I don't know what quite to assign that to because again, again like maybe like I'm pro wall. Maybe I'm, you know, like so I so I actually um if I were doing a stupid dictionary and it, I would be no time is negative and resolve is positive, it's a neutral tweet. And yet we as human readers know actually no time should take precedence, right? Um and then and basically they're castigating the Democrats. So this is a negative tweet about, you know, the sentiment, the overall sentiment is negative. I think there's all this negative thinking like, you know, there's something to resolve. I mean, like- Oh, I see, I see. Problems, yeah. Problems, like so what's the part of speech and how is it yeah. being used? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the fact that it's all caps would add to it. So again, if I'm being slightly smarter as a computer, and again, I tried really hard to be the computer, um, then, then I think that this comes out as negative. Um, so in the next one, um, again, what, are, what do you think are the key words here? Yeah, totally. And I thought maybe open? And so then I was like, ah, but again, then I come out like, but this one really is like, should Donald Trump stop the shutdown, get the government open and make a deal? And I was like, oh, I wonder if deal's in there. And it, it wasn't. Oh, it should, as a modifier. Yeah, I know that's, that's great. Good, that's super awesome. So yeah, so should he do this thing? I think automatically puts this in the like questioning territory. And so I'm going to say, I think this is a neutral. Um, so the next one, I found it like, okay, I think my, my computer brain can do this. Um, I don't know that ground, I looked up grounded. I was like, but if you ground your kids, like, I mean, wasn't in there, but away was obviously. <laughs> so I, <laughs> So it's, it's a negative one for me. Um, and then how about the next one? I think we've got that question mark again, right? That's like, um, it makes it sound like they're doing it. And then there's that link. And that's where I almost am like, oh, I'm sure there was a picture, right? And it's probably talking about when people were entering the trash and stuff. I don't know why that question mark is there. That might be like user error on the part of the tweeter. Um, that's also where the picture could be helpful. Um, so volunteer sounded like a good word to me. Um, again, not in the dictionary. So this is again speaking to like, are there better dictionaries out there, but beautiful is in there. So even if I have to qualify it a little bit, I'm going to, I'm going to say like, I'm going to feel positive. Um, and then the last one, what are our keywords? Yeah. And then hell is totally in the dictionary. Although I was looking up another, I just happened to be flipping through and under the list of like shit words, shiitake is under there. And I was like, so the, I, there's some, I, so I think that the people who wrote this algorithm are, might not have been native English speakers, although it says they called it from other dictionaries. And so we're gonna write them and ask. I'm like, I don't know why shiitake is in there other than if it's somebody trying to not cuss, but I've never seen it used in place of not cussing. <laughs> so I have questions. Um, so yeah. Is it not working again? How is that possible? Okay, so um, we talked about I like, I love. Um, so now I want to talk a little bit about how this algorithm also scores things. So if you have like like and love or a two and a four and adds them together, so you've got a six, you could, you could end up with these really big numbers, right? So what it does is it limits the range. Um, because our really simple one, this is actually a statement which is actually 
taunting Bernie Sanders about the fact that Hillary won Iowa. Um, but there's this one, because he used the word one 24 times in a really simple algorithm, it was like, pronounce 24. And this is also something we got into trouble. We were tracking actually um, candidates for the 2016 presidential election, but often they would mention more than one candidate in a tweet. Now, how do I bin that? Like, how, you know, like that might take some sorting on my part ahead of time, which we always talk about that the, like, the most time consuming and most important part of doing a data project usually comes down to you doing some sorting in the beginning, right? Like Open Refine is a really great tool, um, but it really, like you have to know how your data is sorted. So one of the reasons we moved to this more complex one, and is actually, a, he does it um, using a different algorithm than this, but I'm gonna do it the super simple fraction way for today, um, is he creates a weighted average. Um, so, if you have two, and we know it's on a scale of like zero to four for positive, right? And I know, so now I'm converting it from like, well, what is that to one? So go back to high school algebra, right? Let's cross multiply. So two times one is two, and four times x is four x, so x equals 0.5. Um, so obviously if you have a score of four, like that's easier for us to visualize, right? That's a one. Um, and so now I just do the average, and this is where he gets a little bit fancier with an alpha, and we can talk about that later too. But 0.5 plus one, I add two elements, I divide by two, 0.75, everything is all good. And now we have this weighted average. So there are some limitations even using a fancier script. Um, it doesn't always consider context like the death of poverty, right? That would be a great thing but I've got two super negative words in there. And so I don't have a way to like cancel out, like there's no not in there, to, like in an n-gram to consider, oh, well this is not poverty, right? It could see that as positive, but this is a hard one. Um, or great job Chicago Bears, because you turn the ball over more. Well, you and I all know that this person is being sarcastic, but yeah, that's a, that's a really hard one. Um, love not hate is another one that we've seen like sort of, um, you know, it's, a, it's used in a lot of marches and things like that, but it's, and it comes out as, as neutral um, often, unless sometimes it will do love and then it'll engram the not hate and then sometimes it'll end up positive. But again, you just, you should run phrases like this through your um, algorithm just to see what it gives you. Um, Cause we're gonna get to an example later that uh, has failed every sentiment analyzer that we have put it through. Um, so also dictionary bias, it's a real thing, right? White is positive, black is negative in almost all the dictionaries. And if you're talking about racial stuff, that's not cool. So we were looking at Charlottesville and the tweets surrounding it and we ran into some problems because of another word that was associated with white. Um, so here, uh, government shutdown. Um, I think we can finally say, okay, we have employees going without pay, but we're proud, we have all these things, right? Our four-legged friends, very important that we see our four-legged friends. Um, and so this is a tweet that came out. And also, now that it's over, the panda cam is back up and running. And this is again where like, if I'm gonna do image analysis, like hopefully like an image of pandas is always positive. So this project began for us when we wanted to look at the first 100 days of Trump's, um, like I said, we had followed some of the, we had followed the election, um, but we realized we need to be more systematic. And it's really typical for journalists to follow the first 100 days um, of a presidency. So we decided to explore a few different algorithms. We talk about the simpler ones. Um, and it, we ended up doing this deeper dive into the origins and structures of dictionaries, which is what I think we can bring to something like the Vader algorithm, which was made by computer scientists at Georgia Tech. Um, so for us, like as humanists coming to this as deep thinkers, I look at some of these words, and like I said, I look at the way these words function 
and greater society. And you guys already pointed out like should, like how do we put that into play? Um, and I think about like, why, why is this happening? And I think that's not something that's necessarily been going on. Um, and so that really, like I said, came to the fore surrounding the protests in Charlottesville. Um, so it really helped for us to have a specific topic to start off with um, that we were interested in. Um, we also read like the first thousand tweets in our data set and started, and this is something we recommend with everything we do, you can even start with 100, run it through the algorithm and see if it gives you what you think it's going to, because that's where you can often troubleshoot and sort of see things pop up. Um, there's this really awesome tool that you can get at Hoxie called Tags, um, and it uses Google Sheets to auto scrape Twitter for you. Um, the one thing I will say is at this point, um, it used to be that to get a Twitter um, developer API key, was literally you went on a Twitter, you had a Twitter account, they gave you a key, which is like a bunch of letters. Because of Russian trolls um, and bots, it now takes three weeks to get that key. And you have to fill out a form and say, explain what you're gonna be using it for and say you're not nefarious and also that you're not like President Putin and like it's okay and like, so, um, but because we're at IU, we can, we can show you something else. There is, um, Phil Menzer and his team on campus have been collecting tweets, actually since 2010, but he has um, a fire hose that's been on since then. But since 2016, you can actually get tweets from them, um, which is really great. Because the problem is, even if you had your API right now, Twitter only lets you scrape seven days in the past. So I'm like, oh, I want to study Trump starting now. And it's like, burr, burr. Um, because then we only get to go back to August 2016 with the awesome tools. Um, but there, and there's a couple of things stripped out of it, just according to Twitter's user stuff. But that being said, the text is all there. Um, we, of course, chose Twitter because it's his chosen medium of communication, um, despite spelling issues, which again, you can gets us into stuff. So we wanted to run sentiment analysis on all 250 ish thousand tweets. Um, so, this was with our simple algorithm. And the number one positive word, which is we also were looking at like sort of what are the positive and negative words being used, we're checking ourselves, was Trump. Because it was in their dictionary as a positive word. Right? Because like in cards, if I have lots of Trump cards, like I'm super happy. That's a cool thing. So, yeah. And then also, right. Because if I'm right and you're wrong, <laughs> um, yeah. So we're like, okay, in a political scenario, I guess that's gonna work for us. So we deleted them from the dictionary, which is a great example of why you don't necessarily want to use black box tools, because then you don't have that ability, right? Um, so Voyant is a really um, easy to use, great sort of web interface for text analysis. But if you want to change some things, um, it doesn't give you a lot of control. So, um, yeah, and there's this one tweet that literally <laughs> was like, dum, 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 dum. <laughs> you were like, oh, man. Like, I don't even know. Like, um, like is that, I, I mean, I guess a person likes Trump? I'm not sure. Um, so we also, you know, so we went to the dictionary um, and we got, you know, so Bridge, um, a valuable resource, um, although, you can see usage over time. It turns out there's an outdated, where is it? Somewhere where there's an, oh, nope. Informally or dated. Dated. A helpful or admirable person. And I love that it was, this is like pre like, sure, it's totally dated. Um, so yeah, clearly we had to take that out. So um, we looked at the top negative words. Um, these are from Vader. And here you can see no, ban, there's fake, which we expected, right? Like that word is, now become like the overused word of the century. Um, war, stop, attack. You can see that there are cuss words in here um, as we might expect. Um, so racist is actually already popping up in the 100 days. The positive words also look pretty good, like want, supporters. So there's three. Anybody with like text cleaning stuff having an idea, why is that three there? So this is a three. 
this is an angle bracket. And when we did cleaning, we got rid of all the angle brackets. And so even though Vader actually accounts for emojis, they have to be, like if they're in Unicode, it's fine. But if it's literally typed out, you're like, ah, so this might be a case where we leave them in, I guess. Again, this is just knowledge, right? Like, okay, because clearly this is showing up enough times to be significant. So we need to put that angle bracket back in. So then we customize. So, so here's an example from Charlottesville. We took the top 250 words. This is a really easy way to see it. It used to be, um, I used to be a word cloud snob. I feel like I'm an Alcoholics Anonymous. It's been 225 days since I was a word cloud snob. So the reason they're good is because this is so much easier to process, right, for you than this, um, which is not to say this is not useful. Um, so we see here, of course, we see his handle. Um, we see people, we see white. Um, and one of the, so then we went through and we thought, ah, oh, okay, is there stuff that we want to add to the lexicon in a certain way? And um, this was actually the very first time that we took MAGA off the positive word list that we were customizing because it was being used as much by people who believed in Donald Trump and his response as it was by people who were being sarcastic. Like our country is obviously great again, not yet, right? Like, and it was very, and then they'd have a picture of, you know, the counter protesters. So even though it's used a lot, it was the first time we didn't have a valence for it. Um, the word white here went along with another word. Any guesses? That, okay, good. And supremacy, right, supremacists. So it's obviously used, but here you really need that engram. Um, although I don't think anybody's gonna be talking about white in any other sort of context here. Um, fake news is also being used as a hashtag. And so it's one word, right? Which again, the engram won't count for, so, but we can add that as a negative word to our dictionary. Um, so where is our, I'm gonna go, I promise I'll go back. So here's our thing. Yeah, there's the premises. So what they do in Vader, what they did, and, and this is again, sort of I can complicate it for you, is they had 10 people go through and rank words. And these are um, Amazon Mechanical Turkers. Um, anybody not know? So these are people who are paid like four cents for like each task they do, or 10 cents for each task they do. Um, and it's really common in sociology and other disciplines, I guess, to use them. Um, in digital humanities, there are some folks, um, and I guess I would include myself, who complicate that with, who are your laborers? How are you compensating them? Is it fair compensation? Um, are you looking at people who are, like, is there a level of, like, an underlying level of exploitation here? Um, also, is English their first language? Has that been controlled for? Because you can do these by looking them up in the dictionary, right? And so if I look up Supreme, like Nacho Supreme, I'm probably, I'm pretty confident with that one. But then if I go to Supremacist, um, here you've got a positive three, a positive two, a negative three, a one, a two, a two. I think that that's like, if you have any understanding of the English language over the last 150 years, the way that that word gets used is never positive, right? And given like our current understanding of it, like nobody hopefully stands up and says, I am a white supremacist proudly. Well, okay, that's just true. We know people do. Um, that's not something that I would, I would encourage. And then supremacists though, they rated it negatively. I don't know why now that there's a crowd of them. So if it's just one dude, like, oh. But, so this is where I see some issues with, even though they've controlled um, for this, uh, for doing the mechanical turkers, they had these 10 people, they actually have some pictures in their paper about it where they show like false positives and false negatives and they're doing really well. It's not perfect. And this is one I would certainly point to. Um, and the standard deviation, um, if things were more than 2.5, they threw them out. This one is pretty close, right? Like you're getting there. So, 
Um, so we did this, we talked about, so they do consider emojis um, if they're unicoded. They consider all caps, they consider punctuation, they consider common engrams. Um, and then they give each tweet a separate positive, neutral, and negative score. Um, so this is from their paper, and it talks about um, how they let people, um, or how they encourage people to do this work. And they also oh, have alternative spellings, which if you're doing Twitter again, right? I mean, I, and I probably am one of the few remaining human beings in the world who like text and complete words, like I just can't handle it. Um, so yeah, like this series is literally supposed to be like super confusing for every like S for E and I'm always like, oh yeah, oh, four, right, so. Um, so then the Python code basically implements these grammatical and syntactical rules, um, incorporating what they empirically derived quantifications and um, for the impact of each rule on the perceived intensity of the sentiment. So they do have word order sensitive relationships um, so that you have different scores for things like the service here is extremely good, the service here is good, the service here is marginally good. Um, so our first 100 days using Vader, I was really surprised because I thought that he still had enough followers out there, right? that like hung on his every word on Twitter. Like I felt like that was his platform because that has what, because that's what turned out to be the happening during the election was like, clearly that was, he was the one who was using it the most. Other people were trying to catch up. Um, but, and I was really surprised that it came out this far to the negative. And I think this was actually really helpful because when you look at this, I mean, here it's normalized. Zero just means like it didn't hit, right? Most of the, but, um, it looks fairly even. So this, yeah, like I said, this helped me. Yeah. So a, a tweet about Trump means that it has either at Trump or at the results, or is that how that's? So we did anything that had Trump as, like in there at all. Right, right, yeah, great question. So it's not necessarily just focused on hashtags and ads. Right. I thought we did both. Oh, we did. We just do. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. And I'll show you how to do that actually in, in a sec. Um, yeah, totally. You can totally put that stuff in there. Um, so we talked about that. Um, so here's the government shutdown. Um, and yeah, okay. I mean, I'm, I was a little surprised that the meme was only negative 0.04. But again, I think this may be speaking to you, despite the fact that there's this peak here, um, the fact that there were people who were like, stand your ground, man. Like, this is where we like make our sand. And so, yeah. So we can look at the top words again, um, and we see like unemployment, suffering, exposes. Um, so that all makes sense to me. Um, I did. <laughs> So this came up a lot. I guess there was, I don't know what the Democrats did on the beach, which I think is what that one tweet was about. If they had a big. They went to Puerto Rico to see how the cleanup was going. And Hamilton was, and Hamilton was there. Yeah, her friend a friend who got to go to Hamilton in Puerto Rico and spent the day with Lynn manuel Miranda's dad. Um, so yeah, so that, but that's right. I saw that that, and that was before the whole, like, I'm going to cancel your trip to wherever, right? Stuff started. So they went to Puerto Rico to see how the cleanup was going. And everybody was like, oh, they're partying in Puerto Rico. So at this point, I would probably take partying out of my list of positive words because it's being used to slam folks. Yeah. Oh, I did not. I know because I, well, so that's then the other thing is when we add words using Vader, we often go around and poll like the office, which is not as scientific as like the Amazon chart, right? Because I know, right, I know them. But also like, I, I'm from Mexico. Um, and there are people like, yeah, so in Texas, and I also went to undergrad in Texas. 
many more people in Texas who believe in parts of a wall, right? New Mexico is actually not where like, they're like, eh, I don't think it's really a, so I think it, yeah, like, I don't know what to do with it. Yeah, so what would be really interesting is now to take wall, right, as our, as our search words, and then see what happens around just wall, right, not the shutdown. I could, I could just actually, yes, I could totally say, oh, it's got a score, right? Flip it. Yep, totally do that. Actually, what is partying score? Let's see. I'm gonna see more words that I'm like. Oh yeah, nerdy is in here. And, and it's got negative connotations and I'm like, wait a minute, um, hello? Right, like if I'm talking about Comic Con and I use the word nerd, probably, yeah, right, or Gen Con or what? So again, I think there are a lot of things here that don't necessarily. I'm in the end. Oh, pardons is in here, which not right, so can be a good thing. Also, when you pardon like the guy who was profiling all the people, the sheriff in Arizona who was profiling everybody that. You stop for traffic tickets. Uh, that's no bueno, I think. So party, parley, parlay, like parlay, right? Negative, which I would expect like, hey, we're talking like negative 0.4. Parties, they're all positive. Hmm. Hmm. So here's the sentiment shift about the government shutdown over time. And this is where, again, I think you can see like, that there really are people on both sides. Like, I think that you can see, like, right before Christmas, I think a lot of people were tweeting about, like, oh, you know, shut down all these people, it's Christmas, like, what are they gonna do? How are they gonna buy presents? And then um, there was this other on the 13th, um, I can't remember, there was something that happened, and then again, like, I think maybe, was that the very first, I feel like the first Miss Paycheck was like in here. So maybe that was right before the first Miss Paycheck. Um, so, but you can see like how it was not consistent. And if we did a deeper dive, we could classify that sort of by events. We did a project with um, some students last summer about North Korea. And as we all know, <laughs> um, so like when we first started scraping about, about Trump, we were doing it once a week, because that was enough when we do Obama. We have to do it every day with Trump, right? And literally sometimes I'm like, oh, maybe I have to do it every six hours? Like, I don't know, because, you know, like one minute he's calling him little rocket man and the next minute he's like my really good friend and I'm like, oh, I, don't, I don't know what to do. Um, so yeah, we had to really up the, the frequency which, with which we got stuff. Um, but then we divided it into these periods where at least you could say, I, I think for this period of time, this is how we felt. So again, this is sort of what we were talking about in terms of data selection, hashtags. Um, also, you can share your data um, often there's a group at Alabama that has pulled a whole bunch of tweets that they think are by Russian trolls. And they're like, we only have the resources to do this basic examination, take our data and run with it. Um, so I think that's really cool. So there, here's awesome. Um, yeah, it's the observatory on social media. Um, and it's here, so it's awesome at iuni.iu.edu. These are all online right now and you can play with them. Um, and it'll tell you if it thinks it's a hoax. You can also see trends. Um, there's some networks. The maps one, I mean, I think some are better than other. You can see the bot engineering. Um, this is actually from the midterm, very, really recent. And you can sort of see how this played out. And then this enhanced data down in the corner is the one that I was really pointing to. You just send them a letter that says you're interested in doing this, and they'll give you access to that enhanced data. We provide it to you in JSON format, um, which again, we can teach you how to parse. Um, and they can do all kinds of things. So yeah, I looked up, so here's Fakey. Um, so it's trying to tell you, so Premier League striker on missing plane, um, which is actually true. Um, and, he, and it turned out, yeah, uh, all the people who were on the plane ended up dead. So um, he had just made it to like the Premier League. and so. Um, when you looked at this, though, it says in terms of points and stuff that this is actually most likely to be true. Here, um, you can see 
the ball's on this guy, Nathan Phillips, has some nerve even thinking of asking this Covington Catholic High School, um, this of Covington Catholic High School. And it's actually a known clickbait source. So we know that actually the story that unwrapped around this um, ended up being more complicated than it first appeared, although not as complicated as the right kind of, I think, wants you to think it is. Um, and you can, I've watched the whole two hour video. If you really have time, you can go watch the two hour video at some point. Um, so here's the um, electioneering um, and looking at the volume of tweets and what came out and the hashtags they used. I think it's really fascinating, right? So they are targeting, I mean, it's pretty clear the kinds of tweets that are coming out and what they're about. And we looked up adjunct professor and what did I learn? I forgot what I learned. Because I was like, wait, adjunct professor? What's the matter with poor adjunct professor? <laughs> because. I would assume that that person is, is not going to be in the midst of this embroiled thing. And was it like this? Do I have to log in? Are you going to like make me? Oh. oh, thank you, criminal justice. Um, and that, this person, the other thing we found, I, we don't know, so we still don't know if this account has been hijacked. They were tweeting, they tweeted like 400 things that day. So their volume was like, either this is a, now that they're retired, they, this is all they do? So maybe a real person? Thank you. Um, but so sometimes you learn things like we had at one point we were just looking at like, um, I think it was like Thanksgiving and it should have been really straightforward and like Atlanta kept pop popping up because of like their turkey trot. So that was, I didn't say to do that. I really didn't. I'm not really happy with the wall today. It's making me a little sad. Okay. So, um, oh look, I skipped over it. Do we want to play with awesome or do we want to use the script? Hmm? Okay, let me get to Ben. Here we go. All right, so for the script, we are going to use the ThinLink client. So as you can, well, hopefully see down here at the very bottom, there's that icon. I hit it and drag it over here so I can actually read it. Let's try that again. Did I accidentally close it? There we go. Okay, so you can see it's already filled out. I'm just gonna type in my passphrase. going to want me to use duo so I hit one hit enter sends it to my phone there we go all right now there we go pops up and that is research desktop So, as we discussed to get started with the box, you would just go here, 
storage, click on that and it'll get you set up for a Jupyter Notebook. When you first start, you can go here to Analytics, Jupyter Notebook. You can right click and choose Add This Launcher to Desktop, which as you can see, I did. So it's right there. That way I don't have to do this every time because I use, it's probably the thing I use the most on here. So it's right there now on my desktop. I can just double click it and start it. And this is gonna pop up, a little thing comes down here that says it's gonna take it a little minute. And it doesn't take just a minute, it's not actually that long. And you can see now that it's got all of my folders that are in my carbonate directory. And one of those, I've already brought the intro to sentiment analysis folder over so we don't have to wait for it to load. Although when I've done it in the tests, it doesn't take very long, which is nice. So um, we're gonna click on that. You can see we have some more folders. We're gonna go into notebooks. And why don't we just do the basic, well, it's gonna give you the, the basic one, but it will actually read through the JSON file because this is the, we're gonna read through the actual file that we got from um awesome when we downloaded it and real quick actually i can show you what that looks like um as i said we're going to show you a little bit how to parse it but just so you get an idea of what json actually looks like um, json when i open this it'll open it in a text editor so this right here Enlarge it so it's easier to see. Maybe. There we go. And then let's make it a little bigger. So that's what JSON looks like. No, it doesn't. So, but part. So yeah, but part of the reason we do this is because this can parse through it really easily and quickly uh, for you. So when you go through, first, like I said, we describe we describe all of the notebooks or all of the packages. So Python uses packages, which is really nice. Somebody's already gone through and created some tools for you that will actually help you to code things so you don't have to go through and write it yourself. And so you just have to tell right here, you're telling Python that I'm going to be using these packages and I want to pull them and so I'm going to import them. Um, and we tell you what each one kind of does right up top. And then the next thing we need to do is actually point to our um, folders that we're going to be getting our data from. So let me, let's enlarge this. It's a little easier for everybody to see. Okay. So right here, and this is where you're going to want to make changes right here where it says Closteta in the file path, because that's my username. All you're going to have to change on this is these two right here to your username. Everything else, once you've pulled it in and if you've saved it in your carbonate folder, should be identical. And I've set this up so you shouldn't have to make any changes except to um, file names for things that you might want to save, because we have it set up that it's going to save some pictures um, and some CSVs further down. So here, um, we're actually just basically taking one of the functions, sentiment intensity analyzer, and making it shorter. So now we're just calling it Vader, because that way you're not having to retype that out and try to try to remember it farther down. Here, we're pulling in the JSON files. So this is just going to pull in every JSON file that is in our directory up here. Name first, right? And then all, and then John will come out. And so here, when we're 
Yeah. Right there. So that's where we're doing it, right where it says text here. We're basically telling it just pull out the part that is classified under text. And so this is going to be the tweet content. So you can see we are showing a small example down here. RT stands for retweet. So it's just letting you know this was actually something somebody retweeted from somebody else and who that was. So, and then dot, 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 so it doesn't finish it, but that's where you can see that you're getting the actual content of the tweet instead of something else, because it also gives you things like the date the tweet was created. It gives you the person's Twitter ID number um, and some other data that you might not, you might be interested in for other things, but right now we're not. So uh, we just wanted to check, and this is a good way, it's just printing the first 10, letting us know, okay, we've got what we want. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so here, this one, we're just creating our labels basically so that when we make our graph and we mark how many do we have that were between negative 0.9 and negative and negative one, negative 0.8 and negative nine and going back and forth. So we're just creating what we call our bins or that we're gonna be storing those counts in later. And so here, same thing, we're just creating some variables, the total number of tweets, the total squared and the scores. And this is gonna help us for um, calculating the, like the mean and all that and the uh, standard deviation and those kinds of things later. And so this might look a little scary, but really we're just running now Vader on it and we're telling it to start calculating and putting the scores in the different bins. So if it's this score, put it here. If not, put it here. Else if, put it here. Else if, put it here. Um, so even though it looks really complicated, it's really just, um, with computers, you have to you know, tell it every little minute detail it needs to do. Otherwise, it's gonna either one, do something like a default setting which might be something you really don't want, or it's just gonna break and you're gonna get an error and it's gonna say, I can't do that because I don't really know what you're wanting me to do. Um, and again, we're gonna print an example. So now you can see in our negative one bin, there were 31 tweets that had a score between negative 0.9 and negative one, and the negative nine between negative eight and negative. So you can see the numbers now. So again, it's just checking, making sure, okay, it is calculating, it is doing what we've asked it to do. So here now we are, importing another thing called math, and it's just gonna help us do our mean and our standard deviation. Yeah, math. <laughs> Package math. Um, and here, this is where another place you may wanna make a change. Simply here, if you wanna name your folder or your, your final file something else, but you can see we're just combining the path we had up there to that file name, so Vader combined raw data dot text. You can name it something else depending on what your data actually contains. Um, and then down here, this is where we're plotting our graph. So again, there's a lot of things in here you'll wanna, you'll wanna just keep the same, but there's some things you'll wanna change, which most of them are right here, where you're gonna, these are your labels. So on the sides, number of tweets, bottom is gonna be the sentiment score. You'll probably wanna keep those roughly the same but your title is what you'll want to change here because you'll want it to match whatever data you're using. And we're doing the government shutdown hashtag, so that's what we have it set as. For you, like I said, this is where you'll make your change most likely to the code here. And when we run it, um, the other change again would be the output file name. So we have Vader gov shutdown bar graph. If you're looking at a different hashtag, you'll want to change that. So. But then we get our, our output here. And you can see right there. And we have um, what we set up as, again, we have the zero line, so that's the black one going up. So you can see where that's at. And then you can see the mean, the dotted purple line, just barely into the negative. And then we have our standard deviation as 0.32, which is actually not bad. So. Um, so that is how you do the one, this one, and this is just gonna, again, give you a broad spectrum over all of your tweets. So you get an idea of how many tweets roughly, and then we have the percentages above that tell you what percentage of the tweets made up this score. So like 17.85%, 17.5%, 17.5%, 17.5%, 17.5%, 17.5%, 17.5%, 17.5%, 17.5%, 17.5%, 17.5%, 17.5%, 17.5%, 17.5%, 
made up that negative 0.4, which is, again, pretty large compared to the rest. So, um, And then you can see the output for these is in the folder that we made in here for results. So you can see you have your, um, this is from a different one. When we run it, get your scores and things, and it'll store it right in that folder for you. So now you have it set up. You can go in and you can actually find those. And then again, you can add it to a nice little presentation that you do later um, on the same thing. So um, are there any questions? Is there anything that was unclear? Okay. Do you want to see another one? Or they're, the gist of them is pretty much pretty similar to all three. Um, So one of the good things about this too, um, this was only, as you can see, we only had about 27,000 tweets, which that's still pretty considerable. And if you try to run something like this on your, your own laptop, it's, it's going to bog down a little bit. Um, when we did North Korea, we had 2,600,000 plus tweets. So that really, really made my laptop angry at me when I tried to run it. So this is, these are the types of things that Research Desktop is great for. And it's a great resource to have because it can handle that much better, much quicker. And the other nice thing is when you run something on a research desktop, you're sending it to Carbonate, the server. So you can start it, close your laptop down, and it's still processing on the, the server instead of it running on your laptop. So you don't have to leave your laptop up and running and plugged in all night, making sure that it's running and it's working. Um, and when, when it's done, you just log back in and it'll be, it'll be ready to go. Um, you'll be able to get log back on as long as you don't click that log out button. So you just kind of leave it up as it is and you just minimize it, you shut your laptop off and you're fine. And then you just get back on it in the morning. Um, so that's another really good uh, perk to running things on here. So, um, and again, the things that um, you want to think about when you think about research desktop is it's like you've got an extra computer but if you copying from your desktop like onto this like it's just like if I'm like if I hit control C over here and then I go over and hit control V over there it it doesn't help me when I move between computers because they so these are separate computers okay um, but like you said if I'm running a process like literally like you know he can log off right now and then log back in on his debt on his laptop under him and this will all be right there right or if I start something like I start a job that has like three million tweets which is how many we scrape for North Korea and I'm like ah that's not gonna be done anytime soon I just walk away right and then I log back in later to see if it showed me anything um, so yeah Yeah, that's the other thing, right? Like, so if I were doing it on my laptop, it might take up all the memory. And then I'd be like, okay, I still have my extra laptop. <laughs> so, um, so that's really, that's really cool. Um, do you guys have any questions? Yeah. I'm sort of curious about, I mean, this doesn't completely apply to our example today, mm -hmm. but like how people use this research, uh, this mm -hmm. tool in their research, but of what kind of theoretical scaffolding gets you there, but also like if there's any thought about how to test the validity of your assumptions. So I assume I have uh, mm -hmm. the findings, but I assume that like any large end analysis that you sort of assume that whatever problems there might be with the data, they're kind of washed out with this large number. But I'm wondering if there's also sort of this interest in backing up that through you mentioned marketing research. I might as well yeah. focusing something yeah. actually allow you to test that. I'm wondering if you have any sense of how indicative 
Yeah, actually, um, so there's there's a really great. Um, so, oh, I'm sorry. The question was how you know beyond this like theoretical scaffolding that where I'm like humanizing, humanisting everything. Um, like what happens when I want to do it, and how do I believe in my numbers? Um, and so, on the wall, Troll Plus is my friend. Um, so let's see, get. Uh, so, and it is named, by the way, Vader after Darth Vader. I don't know why he didn't make it into the PowerPoint this time, um, but you should, yeah. So this is this is the raw code. If you just if you feel up to it and ever want to do this, um, and then so features updates, and this again here you can see. Yay, look at there's our emojis. Um, like I said, I always say, I don't know what to do with the pile of poop, so it's probably not in there. Um, so, um, but they have this paper, which is, and I always find it this way. I should probably just bookmark it. And so, um, so this question of like, how do I believe, since I gave you some examples of how it doesn't quite work, but maybe in the grand scheme of things, how, am I, how do I believe that what it's telling me about North Korea or about the, you know, the government jumped down or about the wall? And so what they did, and this is, I think, the one that is they compared it to a bunch of other algorithms and dictionaries that were out there. This is how they talk about mechanical tricking. And then finally down here, okay, this is the key takeaway, and I'll move it maybe to the top. Really? really? Um, I'll move it to the top. So what's happening here is um, this is Vader, and this is basically, so I think I want to make sure, I, this is false positives, this is false negatives. And you can see this trend line here that almost everything, right, is happening in the quadrants where it should be happening. So um, Luke is actually a really famous pay, paid service. Um, paid dictionary where you have to like subscribe, I think. Um, and you can see like, it's okay, but there's more of this happening here. Um, so this is actually Hugh and Lou. These are the, this is the one that we talked about when we were doing our simple algorithm. This is the dictionary that has Trump in it. Um, so you can see, and then like, I, I haven't, I don't know WSD, but that makes me scared. <laughs> um, and I wish they had done so you can see also down here in the next one, this is a really good um, graphic where um, independent humans read 4,200 tweets. And they compare it to um, independent humans who overall precision was 95. Um, they did better if Vader ranking neutral tweets, evidently. We want to assign everything a valence. So, um, I can I can attest to you. You probably know Richard Higgins because you work with him. Um, we did this. We tried this with um, Jane Eyre because both of us have read it like nine thousand times. Um, and so I was like, okay, we're gonna go through and we're gonna like give each chapter a valence. And we both have PhDs in English, and and we totally didn't agree. Which maybe is just again, I actually don't believe in this for the study of literature. But I was like, no, the first like. You know, like when she's at Lowood and everybody's dying. I'm sorry if you haven't read, you know, that, like that's clearly a negative chapter, but there's other chapters where, like, it's not really clear, like, good things and bad things happen. And he was much less likely than I was to use neutral. Um, but I also think I was more likely than he was to use negative. So, um, but yeah, so you can see, and they show like overall recall, and they have an F1 score um, where they're sort of ranking all of these things so and they did it with social media um amazon.com product reviews right so again like you would i think that that's probably something right now that if you've got something that works really well like of course a company wants to know what you know especially if they get beyond you know two reviews they want to know what's happening um and then like movie reviews and new york times editorials were like again Obviously, someone has an opinion about something. Like, what is that opinion? Um, and so they came out on top um, with all of those. Yeah. 
in most instances. Yes, yeah, so she asked, did, did Vader do better than, than human beings? And it did in most of the instances, especially as the data set got larger. Right? Yeah, we could run our own thing. So that's a really great question. Like, like I said, I, yeah, I complicated the heck out of it. I don't understand why shiitake is <laughs> not a good word. I love shiitake mushrooms, but uh, maybe they're just prejudiced against shiitake, like maybe portobello is okay. Um, but yeah, so that they're, the, but this paper is a great one to cite. Um, and like I said, I, I, um, we're going to do, I'm hoping we've been talking about emailing them for a bit, but we're going to email them and also ask them some questions so we can pass those along too. Other questions? Okay. So just to, to be clear, when you go on research desktop and you want to um, log out. So if you disconnect thin link session, everything will still be processing and working and you can reconnect later and what you've started to run will still be there and running. If you go to log out, it'll kill everything. So whatever you've been running will stop. So Remember, log out is only if you are completely done, you've done everything you need to, it's not processing anything for you, you can log out, that's fine. But if you, yeah, thank you, Eric. Um, yeah, so disconnect if you're wanting to come back to it tomorrow and see what your output finally is. Um, so yeah, just think green, good, red, bad. Okay. Are there any other questions? Yes, yeah. And if you... Please feel free to get in touch with us. Um, the easiest email is cyberdh at iu.edu, because my last name is hard to spell. Um, and that also <laughs> makes it easy for me to like send it on to um, David if it's a question that's better for David. Um, please feel free to join us next week when the balmy 54 degrees um, uh, at four o'clock um, in this space. And then the week after that, I'll bring cupcakes or cookies or all the things and we can do text um, hands-on extravaganza. So, okay, thanks.